Hello, everybody. I'm Bill Harris, and today we are joined by a congressman who is in the vanguard in the fight against COVID-19, the Honorable Donald Payne Jr. of the 10th, 10th District, which includes Newark, New Jersey. Welcome, Congressman. We're happy to have you with us. Well, thank you for having me. You know, the, the, one of the biggest reasons that we thought it would be great to talk with you is that the COVID-19, as it spreads around the country and around the world, here at home, at least, it is having a far greater impact among African-Americans in, in your, your city where there's a large African-American population, Chicago and, and many more. You've been working against that type of a situation with uh, measures that you and others have come up with in Congress. What is at the bottom line here? Why are African-Americans being targeted by this invisible disease? Well, um, first of all, thank you for having me. and. Uh, it's a real honor and a privilege for me to be with you and your, your um, viewing um, guests. Uh, <clears throat> you know, this uh, virus is uh, affecting all of us uh, in different ways. And uh, people, uh, you know, people are losing their jobs, their income, and their patience, really. Uh, but we uh, will get through this together. Uh, the coronavirus and African-Americans, uh, uh, has been an interesting dynamic, but um, you know we we find that African Americans are dying from COVID uh, nineteen at higher rates than anyone else uh, yes. in the country. Uh, in New Jersey, African Americans make up fourteen percent of the population, and we're twenty one percent of the coronavirus deaths. Uh, in New York, blacks are twice as likely to die um, than whites. Uh, in Wisconsin, uh, amazingly, um, blacks are 6% of the population, yet they are 40% of the COVID-19 deaths. Wow. So that is a striking, striking, uh, I think that's one, more of the more um, uh, serious and um, striking numbers that we see across the nation. In Louisiana, they're, uh, you know, one third of the population and close to two thirds of the deaths. So, uh, you know, we're dying more because, uh, you know, we are essential workers uh, in the grocery stores, the bus depots, the medical centers. And so um, our population being in these service type uh, industries are more exposed to the population that potentially has a virus, irrespective of uh, race, creed, or color. We're um, more susceptible because we're coming in more uh, contact with the public in those areas. So too many people in our communities, you know, are simply um, can't afford to stay home and they have to go out and do that job. So that lends them to be more exposed uh, as well, but we need testing to understand how many of us really have it. Uh, and that is why I'm pleased uh, that we've uh, included more testing in the next stimulus package. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, I've been fighting every day uh, to protect our community uh, and keep them safe. Right now, you know, I'm drafting legislation to allow these essential workers to get hazard pay for their efforts. Excellent. Uh, many, many of them get hazard pay if they um, get the coronavirus, but I wanna make sure that they get an extra, um, extra money simply um, for working during these trying times. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I heard that New Jersey needed 2,000 ventilators, uh, I didn't wait for the Trump administration to help us because I knew it wouldn't come. Uh, I found a ventilator in Minnesota, University mm -hmm. of Minnesota, that could supply uh, the 2,000 ventilators we needed. So I wrote the Food and Drug Administration to ask for an emergency review of the design. And about a week or so ago, they approved it. So um, we contacted the governor and our OEM to um, <clears throat> you know, let them know that this has been um, approved. And once the engineers put, it, put the design online, local manufacturers across the uh, country 
uh, can begin to um, produce this immediately. So in addition, my website is, um, had a lot of information about um, everything from where to get unemployment benefits to where to get small business loans. Yeah, I, I was uh, at that site earlier. Uh, could you give that address for, for the viewers? Yes, the website is pain.house.gov. And pain spelled P-A-Y-N-E, I think it? Correct, P-A-Y-N-E dot house dot gov. Uh, <laughs> In, 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 in view of testing, you, you, you touched on testing. We need testing. We need testing. Are you among those voices that uh, are, are crying out for more, uh, more distancing rather than reopening the country? What is your position on that? Oh, because absolutely. Again, that is going to further <clears throat> impact uh, African-Americans. To be honest, let me um, say, I, you know, people are talking about, um, you know, getting back on board in May. Mm -hmm. I don't see this. Uh, to be honest, um, and I'm no doctor, but based on the way things are going, I really don't see us um, re-engaging and open back up till June or July, to be honest. This thing is not done. It's still going across the country, and there's still areas in this nation that have not hit their peaks. I mean, we're, yeah, yeah. We, it looks like in New Jersey we're leveling off, but it just looks like it. And if, if we are or not, it's still not been decided. So... We still have issues here in New York and New Jersey mm -hmm. that we're trying to deal with, the two major hotspots in the country. Yeah. And um, so we're, 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 we haven't um, leveled off yet. And so I know, <clears throat> you know, there's still states that have not hit their peak. So I don't see this breaking before June or July. You know, to add to that argument, we were learning, uh, just learning recently that, late um, as this morning uh, in the news, there were reports of that this virus had already begun to strike out at uh, U.S. citizens as far back as February and the like, and that, that some of the deaths um, have been now attributed to the COVID-19, whereas they had thought those deaths were caused by other matters or other means, rather. On the other hand, we have those who are saying that we may get another round of attacks from COVID-19 later this year. All the more reason, I guess, to consider uh, the program of distancing ourselves. Absolutely. Well, I, you know, um, that goes back to the point in reference to, um, you know, going out, going back out and opening up the economy too soon. Mm -hmm. You could potentially have a relapse. It's like, it's like when you have a, a common cold or, or the flu. Uh, if you don't let it run its, run its course and get out of your system, you're going to have a relapse. And, um, you know, that's, um, I believe, if, um, if the, the um, president has his way, um, what could potentially happen? I think we're, uh, I think Georgia and the states, Florida, are, are opening back up too soon. And mm -hmm. we're going to see the ramifications in it in the next several weeks. Yeah. Well, I, Another issue, uh, at least a side issue, I was uh, surprised to learn of this myself, and that is uh, you had sent a letter just uh, yesterday to Congress asking them to consider uh, $20 million to the Family Justice Centers in the next coronavirus stimulus bill, citing the fact that reports on domestic violence have, have increased substantially here in the U.S., and even doubled or tripled uh, worldwide uh, since this deadly crisis began. And obviously, African-Americans, like all other groups, are affected by domestic violence. Uh, what do you think? That? How do you speak to that? Yeah, you know, uh, <clears throat> it's a situation where uh, we have, um, you know, people are under a lot of pressure. Um, you know, um, families are being um, emotionally uh, scarred by this in losing loved ones, um, the emotional strain on families and the economic strain uh, tends to um, escalate frustration. And it's unfortunate that at times people do not know how to um, cope with these stresses and it, it, it lends them to act out violently against the, one they love, the ones mm -hmm. they love. Mm -hmm. uh, it's unfortunate, but... Uh, you know, I, I believe that people are able to take advantage of the ones they love 
because they love them. And so the ramifications are not as great when someone cares about you. Um, you know, they, they, tend, they might tend not to report you uh, to the authorities, uh, what have you, because they care about you. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we have a situation where uh, we cannot allow this to, um, to um, you know, uh, grow like the virus has and become, uh, you know, another major issue. So I thought it was important that we um, uh, have money secured towards that end, making sure that uh, people that do unfortunately find themselves in this situation uh, have a safe haven or somewhere to go yeah. or someone to reach out. So, you know, that, that means facilities, that means beds, that means apartments, that means money in order to um, provide those services. So I thought the $20 million would be, um, you know, money well spent on making sure that um, people who need it can be safe. Absolutely. Now, what about the Congressional Black Caucus? Uh, are, are they amassing themselves together with the political muscle to make sure that some of these conditions that you outlined in, in the beginning of our uh, talk, uh, the service jobs that African Americans are doing that, that cause them to be more exposed to things like this, that we can change some of these living and working conditions as uh, African Americans can move up the social and political and economic ladder um, so that we can have better lives and, and more protection. Absolutely. I, you know, we, um, <clears throat> we at the Congressional Black Caucus um, understand that, uh, you know, we've been called the conscience of the Congress. Mm -hmm. And it's not by mistake because we potentially always are the members of Congress shedding light on people's circumstances and the conditions that they find they're in, the least of us. Mm -hmm. We fight for the least of us. Yes. In most of our districts, that's who we represent. Mm -hmm. So being a spokesperson for those people, it's our, it's our job to articulate uh, the issues that impact them. So we have um, been um, uh, natural partners with um, the downtrodden, uh, irrespective um, of race, creed, or color, uh, just people on the lower end of the deal and the spectrum, uh, we find ourselves natural allies fighting for them and uh, reminding, you know, our, our more well-to-do um, colleagues and districts that there are people out here that are suffering, that don't have what they have, and we're not going to let you forget them and throw them by the wayside. Uh, we have uh, <clears throat> been fighting um, for I have another piece of legislation that had um, really started prior to the, the virus. Uh, we found that uh, there's a move in this country to move away from cash, um, a dollar, the legal yes. tender. And, um, you know, with the digital economy, um, there are more and more um, uh, stores and, and, and vendors that are not accepting cash. Mm -hmm. But we thought that that was, number one, un-American, and number two would put a lot of people in a situation that are unbanked or underbanked. 25% mm -hmm. of this country is underbanked or unbanked. So um, that means a lot of people that use, still use cash. And 25%? Yes, 25% of this nation wow. uh, does not use credit cards or don't have credit card access to credit. So, um, you know, I thought it was very important to make sure that, you know, a, a, a good old saw buck, you know, with George Washington's um, face on it or Lincoln's face on it was still accepted uh, in this country as legal tender. It's un-American yes. not to, not to um, accept the dollar. The world, the world economy is, is, is set by the tender of dollars. They don't talk about yen or or what are rubles they talk about dollars when they talk about economies so to have it not accepted in the united states of america i thought was absurd so i had a piece of legislation um, um uh that was going through the um congress and it's really picked up a lot of speed with this virus coming on mm -hmm. because um you know it's obvious that in this time you know, people are going to have cash and not actually not even have a lot of it. 
But, um, you know, the, the need to accept cash uh, was more important now than uh, ever before. So um, it's picked up a lot of steam. Uh, Maxine Waters, chairwoman of the Financial Services um, mm -hmm. Committee, Mm -hmm. uh, has acknowledged the um, the bill, so that's a good sign. If she's aware of it and pushing it, then it has a great chance of being passed. So, um, you know, we're, the the caucus, as usual, is um, fighting for the least of people in this country. Yeah. Now, uh, could you just uh, give us a brief overview of what's happening on um, three other bills that you are supporting in Congress? The first one being a the Coronavirus Preparedness and Response Supplemental Appropriations Act, and, and I'll go into the other two after. Just a brief overview of that. Yes. Uh, you know, we have um, um, had um, allocated $2 trillion um, in the, um, the coronavirus bill, and uh, we uh, are running out of that money very quickly. So the next bill um, that we're working on, uh, you know, you know, we're we're close to passing um, the next corona, coronavirus stimulus bill. Um, as a matter of fact, the Senate passed it uh, yesterday, and mm -hmm. so we've been called back to Washington for tomorrow to vote on that bill. And so, um, you know, we wanted. Uh, more money for testing because uh, we know the more you test, the more uh, actual cases you're going to find. And, you know, we get a better understanding of how many people in this country um, have it and how long it's going to take us to get back to normal. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we wanted money for state and local governments because going back to our point about people on the front line, you know, um, if state and local governments go bust, um, essential services are, um, you know, uh, ravaged. I mean, they'll have to lay off police officers and fire, fire off firemen. Um, you know, it gets down into OEM and all those things that, um, you know, local state and local governments need to do in order to keep the, um, you know, state functioning properly for its residents. So we thought that that was very important. I had a discussion with the mayor of um, Newark, um, and the one thing he was concerned about was aid to state and local governments. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, with the president saying the states need to handle it on their own, um, you know, there's even more reason that this should, this should be passed because how are they gonna handle it if they don't have the um, resources in order to do so. So yeah. uh, it's kind of catch-22. You know, uh, states do more, but we're not going to send you the money. Well, I mean, that, you know, that kind of doesn't make very much sense in most um, parts of the world. I don't know about the White House, um, but, um, <clears throat> you know, we want to push for that. Also, um, you know, it's becoming an issue around uh, food insecurity. And um, we've gotten to a point where there are communities that are in, insecure around food. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, the unemployment issue um, to make sure that people are made whole during this time. Um, we have um, been fairly generous with our um, unemployment benefits. And we're having a kind of an ironic um, blowback with that. Um, some... Some people have called for their uh, employees to come back and they've been told that, well, you know, actually, sir, uh, <clears throat> I'm doing better on unemployment than, you know, I'm doing with, with the job because if I come back to the job, then I'll lose that additional $600 on top of the, the, the normal benefit that I receive. Um, and so it, it's, it's almost um, as if they're better off on unemployment. So we have to look at that too. Um, you know, and they have to understand that unemployment is, is, is not um, permanent mm -hmm. and that their job is. So even though they are making a bit more on unemployment, 
that's going to run out and you're going to need the job. So um, we're trying to make that clear to people too. Uh, so those are a few of the things that are coming up uh, in the next bill that we'll vote on um, on Thursday. Okay. Let me ask you, does this also, what, what you just um, relate, does this also cover the Family First Corona, Coronavirus Response Act as well as the um, the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Securities Act? Did, did yes. You yes. As well? uh, yeah, all of that's in discussion. And, okay. uh, um, you know, I definitely am uh, supportive of, of any aid that we can uh, can can give uh, the American people. And believe me, um, this is not the last bill. There are already, as we're going to vote on this one, mm-hmm. we're starting to talk about the next the next uh, package that we'll have to um, uh, do for the American people. This thing is not um, over by any stretch of the imagination. No. It's, uh, you know, really been an incredible experience. But I think, <clears throat> you know, um, the American people are resilient and um, we're going to have to do everything we can uh, to make them whole and uh, continue to support them until we can get back to normal, whatever normal is. Yeah. I don't know what that's going to mean in the future. There's going to be so many things that are changed in yeah. uh, the way our uh, our economy, our culture operates that um, that we'll have to see. I mean, are people going to go back to shaking hands? Are people going to, you know, um, you know, continue to do um, this distancing um, as a habit? And so I see some of those things that could potentially become part of our, our culture. Yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> In, in, in any, do you have any final remarks that you'd like to make? Uh, we really appreciate your time today. Anything that you is burning in your heart, on your chest, you want to make yeah. sure you get over to the people? You know, just to continue to talk to our communities and um, tell them to be safe. Um, you know, uh, this whole issue around um, uh, African Americans dying at a high rate, you know, first of all, I mean, um, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that people are surprised by that fact. I mean, we are, you know, in this, um, in this culture economy, I mean, we're already at the bottom of the, the, the list. So what would, why are you surprised now that we're dying at a higher rate? I mean, that's, that's the norm in this country. Um, if we didn't have this virus, I mean, we have, um, you know, the four, the four highest um, susceptible issues around COVID, um, you know, African-American communities have. I mean, high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, you know, all those symptoms uh, make you more susceptible to COVID and, uh, you know, the age. I, uh, you know, I'm a, um, I'm a diabetic who um, is on dialysis. And, uh, you know, I've done some work around that as well, making sure that you know, dialysis patients are, um, you know, in this equation too, and the workers mm-hmm. there. I mean, you know, um, I have to go out three times a week, whether I like it or not, in order to get my dialysis uh, treatment. So that's three times a week that, you know, I'm exposed to 25 people in a room with, uh, you know, four or five workers and what have you. So, you know, the probability of, of you know, me or one of my uh, my um, patient my co-patients um, is 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 increased by three times a week. So um, you know I've I've got some legislation working on that too. But um, you know if um, you know it's like I said if if the country coughs we get the flu. Mm-hmm. So um, you know I I'm I'm not surprised by the numbers. Um, but we, uh, you know, have to continue to try to take care of ourselves. Also, the census. Mm-hmm. The census is very important. Yes, it is. Because, and um, there's a, it seems that in New Jersey, we're having a low count. Um, so we're pushing for that. Because that's the only way you get the resources to your community is by the number of people that are counted. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's vital across this country that people answer the census. It's not shared with any other group. Um, the you know, ICE can't get the information. 
Um, IRS can't get the information. No one else can get that information. It goes to the census. It's like a lockbox. And it's just for the, um, the, the sheer um, thing of counting how many people are in the country. So please answer the census or else your communities will get short chains uh, with schools, with roads, with um, aid to hospitals. So it's very, very vital. Well, thank you very much. As you continue the fight for African-Americans and uh, your general constituents in, in general, we thank you for the time you've spent with us. And uh, listen, we want to give you a platform. Anytime you need to talk, give us a call, let us know. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Congressman Payne. Happy for you. Well, thank you for having me and God bless everybody. Mm -hmm.